has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, this is Pastor Schaefer. I welcome you to our worship time together, whether you're listening on the phone or watching through uh, YouTube. This morning, our musicians are Don Drenner and Pam Drenner. Our lector is Jenny Bitzer, and we welcome Vicar Emmy to our pulpit. So let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. Please stand as you are able. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pause for reflection as we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. For by grace, you have been saved. Out of great mercy, Jesus Christ was sent to die for your sins on the cross. As he lives victorious from the grave, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. We continue with our gathering hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine from our hymnal number 774.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord. 
But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, of Abba Malah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elijah shall kill, yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to bow, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read in unison Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall pray for God a pathway. The second reading is from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by the time the boat, battered by waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But then he noticed the strong wind. He became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to you, O Lord. Let us pray together. O Lord, may the meditations of the, my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, little microphone malfunction, our lot rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you're standing at home, you may be seated at this time. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take a warning. Sitting on the dock of my grandparents' little beach house in Delaware, my grandmother and I would look at the summer sunset smeared with red, orange, and pink that colored the skies of Massey's Landing. My grandparents' neighbors were deep sea fishermen who would sail hours off the coast of Delaware to catch tuna, marlin, and dolphin fish. Some mornings we would wake up early before the sun rose to see, sleepily see them off and wish them a good trip. When the sun rose, I would often check the sky to see if the sailors would encounter any trouble in their day's fishing. I wonder if the same words would have been familiar to Jesus and his disciples. Did they take color of, or notice of the color of the sky that morning? This week, we see Jesus and the disciples immediately after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus tells the disciples to get in the boat and go ahead of him. The men do as they're told and encounter rough waters that batter their boat. I can imagine the brutal winds, the little protection from the elements, and rough waves that sent the men in the boat into a state of sheer panic. From the story, it sounds like it was not a passing storm. We're told that they get into the boat in what appears to be the afternoon, and by the next morning, this storm is not letting up. It lasted for hours, which at sea could have felt like days. These were men that were fatigued mentally, physically, and spiritually. It's in the morning that they see something walking on the stormy seas. Imagine being in the stormy sea in a small fishing boat with about 12 of your friends. After an evening of no rest, <laughs> And a long day prior to that, helping to feed a crowd, they were probably changed from joyous people to scared shells of men. I can imagine that they must have felt pretty shell-shocked from the whole experience because they mistake Jesus, their teacher, for a ghost. In response to the fear of the men, Jesus shouts, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. 
Today, we stand in the midst of our own storms. We worry about coronavirus measures and their impacts, racism and disasters that are happening to our neighbors and siblings near and far, fearing for our peace of mind and our neighbors all at the same time feels like a struggle. We want to walk with Jesus in support of what is righteous, but some days it feels difficult and overwhelming <laughs> when there are so many things vying for our support, our time, and our attention. This can all seem paralyzing until something can shake us out of whatever funk we are in and set us straight. That is, until we can clearly hear the words of Jesus. This is what happens to Peter. The boat he is moved from, in the boat, he is moved from his fear, and he is moved to respond. Peter doesn't ask Jesus just to quell the storms. No, G Peter asks Jesus to bring him closer to him. Peter cannot get closer to Jesus without the help of Jesus himself. And even though Peter is coming to Jesus, in his power, Peter is still only a mortal man and can only be helped with the gift of God. In the same way, we are like Peter, waiting to grab God's outstretched hand in order that our own faith might be restored. It's only once Peter steps out onto the water that he notices the strong wind about him. Perhaps he's worried that these are the winds that are finally going to take them down that night or that morning. The winds were there before. The men had been in the storm all night. But it's only when he steps out onto that water that he is so acutely aware of their impact and on his impact of moving closer to Jesus. Despite all of this, he walks, but he begins to sink and cries out to be saved. Some days it doesn't feel all that hard to imagine what Peter's going through to feel like the woes of the world are too much to bear. A few weeks ago, I helped with the funeral of a member whose spouse had passed away. The spouse who still lives is living in a nursing facility and was not able to attend the funeral of his wife of 63 years due to coronavirus me measures for safety. And my heart broke. I heard a story of a friend who was bullied in an Uber for the color of their skin and afraid to leave for fear of their own safety and afraid to stay. And my heart broke. I watched this week as a cloud of pink engulfed the city of Beirut in a cloud of destruction, leaving some dead and others struggling to find hospitals spared from the blast and able to provide medical care. And my heart broke. But in the midst of all this, I know that heartbreak will solve nothing. I need to be like Peter and reach for Jesus in these times when I feel like I just can't do it all by myself. I need the hope of Jesus to change what cannot be changed for the sake of the kingdom of God here on earth and to help my neighbor to create the world that they need and that we all need. In Hebrew, there's a word for listening called Shema. And within the Jewish culture that Peter and his, the, the other disciples would have been a part of, this would have been a word that they would have been familiar with from the temple. Shema is not just simply hearing. It's not the input of information that is, moves the bones in the ear and is processed by the brain to come to some visceral understanding. 
No, Shema is an entire full body experience of listening. It is looking at the, what is happening in the scene. It is hearing and processing what the other is telling you and being moved to respond in a way that helps you understand more deeply. When people were commanded or told to listen, they do, did so in a way that moved them to more fully understand their neighbor. Perhaps a little Shema might help us in our quest in aiding the neighbor these days. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Are the words Jesus utters to Peter after he pulls him from the water. It's as though Peter completely forgot that moment just mere hours before where they stood on the beach and watched Jesus feed more than 5,000 people with a couple loaves of bread and two fish. The fear of being consumed by the waters scares Peter so much, he simply forgets. He forgot that this person named Jesus, who told him that he was the son of God on earth to tend to God's creation, was a person who was both fully human and fully divine. I know that like Peter, I forget this, and perhaps you might also forget, find yourself forgetting too. The moment the overwhelming distractions seem to steadily creep into life under the sound that is so deafening that there doesn't seem to be a way to hear anything else beyond the clamor. That's when God urges us to stop, to pause, and to listen. We are to listen to the good news that Jesus died to make us new. That on the cross, Jesus died so that we may live an eternal life. We are not here on earth to live amongst the storms, we are, but we are here to listen to our neighbors amidst and despite those storms. We may not always be on the boat, but perhaps with a little faith, we might be able to walk on water. So if tomorrow morning you see a red sky, take hope in the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we have protections against the storms that come our way. Amen. from our hymnal number 756. See 
to give for wild confusion peace oh hear us when Let us confess our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy God, we pray for our neighbors. We see the pain of our neighbors in Lebanon. Walk with them as they strive to rebuild their capital, care for their people, and find the strength to create a new life from the rubble. We also pray for the healing of the Swanson family and vitality for our partner congregation, Conga Lutheran. God of mercy. The Lord is here to God, we rejoice in your waters this week. We thank you for the rains that nourish our crops and fix drooping flowers. We thank you for your unending love that you provide us in the waters of our baptism. May we forever remember the promises and power in every storm and shower. God of mercy. Oh, Holy God, we pray for the caregivers of the world. We are forever in awe of the great challenges they face in these times of change. We especially pray for parents as they make tough decisions about their children's school plans and health care workers who daily face the tolls of the coronavirus on the health care system. God of mercy. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for their faithful giving, either by mail, online, or as a part of our outdoor worship. This has let us do so many things here at St. Paul, and we are so thankful for your work or for your giving. Um, as a part of our outdoor worship, there will be a basket outside next to our bulletins if you decide to make your way out there after this. Um, and you can always put offering out there. I would like to highlight that we are still doing our With One Another Wednesday for our children. And we'll be doing that this week at 6.30 and they'll be doing that out in the pavilion. We also will have a meeting of the Eucharistic ministers today after our 10 o'clock worship service. And that'll just happen out in the pavilion right after our 10 o'clock worship. So if you are a Eucharistic minister, please come on out to that. I also got word from Welka that a lot of the health kits that, and blankets that they put together have been destroyed in the explosion in Beirut. Um, and so we pray for our women who will be sewing blankets and putting together health kits for those who have been affected. I want to take a moment to thank everybody who is here this morning, Pam and Don, who are helping with music, Jenny Bitzer, who's helping with the reading, AJ Art, AJ and Art Painter, Josh Fackler, and Pastor Marty. Without all of them, we wouldn't be able to do all of this. And so we give them great thanks for their time this morning. We will also be having the last Sunday that Mel Fair will be helping with our contemporary worship outside at the 10 o'clock service in the pavilion. And we thank you, her for her many years of help and dedication when it comes to our music. All creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread. These are the signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. go forth this day remembering that storms may not cease, but the love of God through Christ Jesus is our Savior, our healer, our one of hope, who continues to reach out for us. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and give you grace and peace. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 785, where peace like a river.
should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.